Hey, hey, imagine that. You follow me still straightening on this bent up radiator. Working on getting these fins all presentable. It's a very time consuming process. But I think it's worthwhile. You're probably wondering why am I even bothering to try to fix this original core? Why don't I just go out and buy a new core and put it in and be done with it? Well, a few different reasons. One, it's the original core, as best I can tell. Taking this radiator all apart, I didn't find any sign that this radiator had been messed with in the past. A lot of times you can tell when they've had farmer fixes and whatnot. And this one, like I said, I don't know, I haven't seen any sign of that. So as far as I know, it's the original one. So being whatever it is, 90 some years old, to me that's historically worth trying to keep if at all possible, and it keeps some of that originality of the tractor. Another reason I like to try to save these original cores wherever possible is that the new ones, yeah, sometimes they're not the greatest. Sometimes they're a little on the flimsy, flimsy side. I'm not saying they're all that way, but whenever possible, I like to try to use the original ones. And sometimes they're built in such a way, finding reproductions is very hard to do, if not impossible. Although I recently found a company out in California that does radiators. And from what I can tell, they can do just about any kind of radiator you can imagine as original. But I imagine they are probably very expensive though too, because they're all custom, custom built to order. But it's good to know that there is sources for them out there. Because finding anybody that works on radiators anymore is getting harder and harder. Currently, I actually have no real good source for a radiator shop. The guy that I had do my 612 radiator has since closed up shop and retired, which is unfortunate because he was actually a pretty good uh, guy at doing it. One of the last old school guys, so to speak, that understood old antique radiators. A lot of uh, modern radiator shops How do I say this? <clears throat> Modern radiators are not built and fixed in the same way that these antique ones are. A lot of the modern stuff is plastic and, you know, it, they're not like these. Where this is solid copper. <laughs> you know, the tubes are copper, the fins are copper, everything is soldered together. There's nothing plastic on this. No sense in watching me do this for hours on end because that's that's what I got ahead of me here hours and hours of straightening so we will check back when I have something to show you so it goes without saying if any of you out there have a good source for a good radiator repair place 
where they understand these antique projects. I'm all ears. Let me know. Leave a comment below or get a hold of me, whatever. Because, you know, I'm sure I'm going to have projects in the future where it would be nice to have some assistance. I mean, it's getting to the point, it's so hard to find people to work on this stuff that I'm at the point, I think we're going to learn to try to do this stuff ourselves, you know, hone up on our soldering skills. And I mean, it's frustrating that it's come to that certain things I would actually prefer just to bring to a professional, but it's like anything. If you can't find a professional, you have to become that professional. So, yeah, that's what I know. If you if you want it done right, you got to do it yourself type of situation. So, yeah, leave a comment below if you know of a, an actual good radiator shop. I'd love to hear about it. I thought a couple more questions to ask you guys. Got lots of time to think when you got projects like this. Number one, what do you guys do or use to clean radiators with? You know, what products and what method? I mean, uh, yeah, to get the big chunks out of the cores, we'll take a long skinny brush and we'll, we'll brush out all the tubes to make sure they're clean of debris. And once the weather breaks, you know, spring is not here yet in North Dakota, still snow on the ground. But once the weather breaks, we'll get the hose out and spray it all out, flush it all out really good, whatever, soft brush to scrub off the outside or whatever. But is there any cleaning products or whatever that you guys would recommend for actually cleaning things? in like preparation for paint basically uh, there again i realized my audience for people that are actually repairing their own radiators like me is probably rather small there's not a lot of crazy guys out there like me that actually do this so i probably ain't gonna get a lot of feedback but you never know sometimes you guys surprise me Seems that everybody and their brother knew what those uh, torsion bars were a few weeks back that we didn't know what they were. We had a lot of comments on them. So sometimes you guys uh, pleasantly surprise me. And then the next question. So obviously this is going to be a full paint restoration right painting the whole tractor there's a little bit of uh, artistic license I suppose when it comes to these radiators I'm not sure how they did it at the factory to be honest with you if they I'm guessing they probably had a fully assembled radiator and tractor and they probably painted the whole thing uh, at least giving the core a dusting of green with the rest of the tractor. Now, I realize you're not supposed to put paint, or if you are, very little paint on the core because that affects your cooling abilities. The, you, you lose that uh, heat dissipation when you have it too much paint on your radiator. But we got to do something here. You know, we're not going to just leave it like this. So do I just give it a dusting of green like the rest of the tractor? Or do I hit the core with some black first before we reassemble it and then mask that off and paint the actual framework of it? green 
and try to keep the core as black as possible because you can get uh, actual radiator core paint. I believe it's usually black, maybe always black. And that's specifically designed for radiators. It's like a, I guess it's like a thinner paint. And from what I understand, it's, it stays flexible. It doesn't like fully dry, so to speak. It, it stays kind of flexible. So as the radiator expands and contracts and whatever, the paint doesn't start flaking off, which is one hesitation I have about painting it green is the longevity of that, especially on an old core like this that, you know, goes back to my first question. I don't know how clean we're going to be able to get it as far as painting purposes goes. So, any ideas or comments or experience there is appreciated. I'm not sure what I should do there. What would you do if it was your tractor, basically? Wow, that was an exercise in patience. I pretty much got it straightened out here now. I can't look at it any longer. I've been staring at this for way too many hours. But it came out pretty good. There's one dinghy there in the middle, unfortunately, where the tubes are actually kinked in. So, of course, the fins are kinked in with it a little bit. I don't know if you can tell on camera or not, but I did what I could do. Other than that, it's pretty darn beautiful. Hopefully it holds water. We will find out. I've been working on this radiator some more. I uh, rotted out the tubes, a chunk of wire, and a little skinny piece of strap steel, and got a bunch of junk out of that. Obviously, we're still a ways away from uh, getting the hose out and flushing things out outside. It's still a foot of snow on the ground. So, for now, I chose to work on this bottom tank. Uh, we'll see if we can get this crank arm loosened up and removed so we can get the tanks cleaned up. Uh, both the bottom and top side pieces, we'll get all that stuff cleaned up. I'm hoping I, maybe I can get that and maybe the side pieces in the sandblaster. I'm not sure if they'll fit, they might be a little bit too long. We can, we'll give them a quick sandblast probably. Um, there should be a pin through here that allows the crank handle to nest in the vertical position. That pin is missing and the hole was full of dirt. I just picked all that out. Uh, looking at this, I think, so this is what goes into your uh, crank on the front of the tractor to crank the tractor. Um, I think all that holds this onto the shaft is this pin. So if I can get that pin out, this will come off and then the shaft can come out of the radiator bottom tank. I got the crank pin driven out. I want to make a new one of them. Pretty worn out. I got the cross pin for the crank handle. Pound it out and I'm in the process of pulling off. The crank handle off of the shaft. I was going to leave that alone because I was going to take apart that end and pull the shaft out that way and there would have been no reason I really needed to take the arm off. But in the process of trying to free up the shaft in the radiator housing here, which is still stuck at this moment, I realized that the handle was actually loose on the shaft. I could wiggle it. So I'm going to take it off anyway to tighten that back up. So I might as well Loosen it that way, and then maybe it gives me more options as far as pressing the shaft out of the housing. Yeah, I got it all apart. It was a struggle, especially to get the shaft out of the bottom tank. And it's no wonder. The thing is very much bent. There's at least an eighth, probably close to three sixteenths bend in that shaft. Which I'm not sure how they even did that, but let's see if we can straighten that out. 
few minutes with the press and the straight edge. Got the shaft straightened out. And it's amazing how, you know, just a little bit of cleaning and a little bit of straightening. And it's a nice, you know, fit in there again. Doesn't bind at all. Especially once we get it all cleaned up. So we're gaining. Still very crusty, but we're gaining. I should probably quit while I'm ahead here. I even managed to straighten out the spinner. And I actually tightened it up a little bit, repeened over the end. So it's a nice, nice fit. Cool. Okay, last night I sandblasted up a bunch of stuff here. Got these in the sandblaster. The sides are too long to go in the cabinet, unfortunately. And of course this cannot because of the vent tube, overflow tube. Uh, but I uh, got this sandblasted up, cleaned up really pretty good. I got a little bit more final cleanup to do, but today I went out to Lawrence's and used his welder. These corners were all worn down, so I built them up and I just got done filing all that back into shape. Those are... So when the crank is in there, there is a pin that goes through there. We'll just substitute this drill bit for a pin at the moment. So that'll keep the hand crank nested when you're driving around. It isn't just sitting there flopping around. And then you go in. Oh, do it with one hand here, do it in the crank, crank, and then back to the nesting position. So I also, there was some rotten spots where the old hose was there, and between that and that, the moisture I suppose got in there and rusted out. There were some spots that were actually holes right through. I welded them up, ground them smooth. I even welded up some of the pits to make it a little bit nicer. It's still very pity. Uh, I will probably do like I did on my 2035 short fender. Those are cast tanks. I couldn't weld them up. They weren't rotten through, but they were very pitted. So what I did with them is I put a smear of like JB Weld around there. So it's a nice smooth surface for that new hose to seal up against. Uh, that worked pretty good. I'll probably do uh, something similar here just to make sure that that hose seals up nicely on that pipe. I'm pretty confident that I have all the holes welded up so it'll actually hold water. I uh, did a similar thing to the top tank. Some pits and holes there. Well, there wasn't actually any holes in this one, but there was some pretty deep pits where there couldn't have been much material left there. So I got that all welded up there was a couple of i'm not sure what happened to this there was like looks like somebody hit it with a hatchet or something some some big tick marks i welded them up and metal finished them so cosmetically those will look nice once it's all painted i got to do final cleanup on this tank yet too i just well i cleaned it up just enough so i could do my welding and whatever with a kind of a clean tank and there was a spot here I added some weld. It wasn't rotten through, but it was it had to have been pretty thin there because that's where the core sits. So all the stuff sits on that ledge there and rots it out. A lot of times they're pretty thin around those areas there, especially on the top tank. Like I said, where all that rust and gunk sits in that little ledge there. Got that. Weld it up a little thicker for good measure. What I'll probably do, and uh, look for some advice from you guys here, if you have any recommendations. I would like to, you know, when these are all done, cleaned up really well, I would like to coat the insides of these tanks with something before final assembly to prevent them from corroding any farther. Um, so if you have any recommendations of what type of product to use for that, you know, can a guy use like that uh, Gliptol, like they use for sealing inside of transmission housings and whatever, in engines, 
that type of thing. I know that's some really good stuff as far as like that goes oil, but I'm not sure if that's really designed for radiator applications as well. I'll have to do a little research. But if you have any uh, recommendations there, uh, you know, it would like a, I use that gas tank liner on the 612 to seal that up. But there again, I don't know if that's really designed for radiator applications as well. But I did the same thing there, so that wouldn't corrode over time. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. So, yeah, let me know. Leave a comment below. Or if you know uh, what type of a product would be good for this situation. I, don't, I want something a little bit better than just regular paint, I think. Because uh, I don't know how paint will last. Uh, you know, exposed to heat and cold cycles and antifreeze because eventually I'll probably run antifreeze in this uh, like my other tractors I also brought that core up to the shop and used the air compressor and blew that all out really well uh, I'll have to do a little bit more cleaning on that and then I think we're pretty good as far as that goes and then the goal maybe even for this weekend if things go really good is I want to cut out some new gaskets and put this whole radiator back together for a dry fit and for the purposes of testing to see if it'll hold water and how many leaks we have specifically in the core I picked up these plumbing caps to put over the inlet and outlets to so I can fill up the whole radiator with water to test it um, and then once it's proven that it'll hold water and I'm confident everything is good, we'll take it all back apart. We'll do final cleanup. We will paint all the tanks and sides and all of the strapping and whatnot. The bolts all together. I got that all cleaned up too, by the way. Um, we'll paint that all apart. We'll probably paint. I'm, right now I'm leaning towards painting the core black with radiator paint and then final assembling everything you know we'll just have to touch up the bolts nuts and bolts of course when it's all done but I think that's how we'll tackle that and again leave me a comment below let me know what you think that I should do with that core should I do black should I do green what do you think would look best so that's kind of where we're at here. Like I said, we'll have to kind of doing things twice to take it all apart, to paint it again later, but I want to be confident that everything is going to hold water before I paint. Because I want to paint it, put it all together, then realize it leaks, have to take it apart, put it back together again. That's no fun. So I'd rather do it when it's still in raw form. If that makes sense. The weather's getting pretty nice here, so we should be able to get outside and test this radiator pretty soon. That'll be exciting. It's the only leaks we got. Be sure to check back next week, and we will continue with this 1525 restoration. Thanks for coming and hanging out here at Swanson's Garage. See you next week.